only invented in 1930, and even then just as the result of an industrial accident. Do you know anything about it? No, sir. Oh, good. It's visiting hours at Brooks Nook. This calls for a very special blend of psychology and extreme violence. <laughs> Yes, here we are in Brooks Nook, and today's special La Triviata guest is somebody I'm absolutely thrilled to meet. Her name is Val Lehman, and she, of course, is famous for playing B. Smith in Prisoner Cell Block H. Welcome to La Triviata. Thank you very much. I did that all on one breath. You did, I'm terribly impressed. Because I'm a classically impressed. trained actress, like yourself. I can tell, yeah. Like yourself, because you've, of course, done loads of other things, but it's just that we know you for B over mm. here. Oh, I've done a few other things here. Oh, I yes? Do. Oh, yes, but on stage. Fill us in. Oh, well, I've just finished a play of Lady Chetley's Lover, for instance. Oh, yes, you're Mrs. Bolton That's in that. That's right. Who mm. is the friend, the housekeeper? Is the yes, house... Oh, she's sort of the confidant secretary that comes to nurse, that comes to sort of do for Sir Clifford. Would you like to help me fill in your La Triviata Star of the Week questionnaire? Oh, my goodness, eh? Think of me as a friend, OK? <laughs> right, what was your nickname at school? Bluey. Bluey. Any particular reason for that? They all call redheads. They are blue in Australia. Don't really? ask me why, I just do. I always thought they were a bit odd. <laughs> With which fictional character do you most identify? The March Hare. The March Hare. Mad as? Mm. Yes, I'm also, I'm so. a Piscean, you see. You're a Piscean? Mm -hmm. The March Hare. If you were given £1,000 tomorrow, how would you spend it? Very quickly. Very quickly. I like that answer. That's the most honest one we've had so far. OK, a little bit of word association here. Ballcock. A well-hung plumber. This is a family show. No, it's not, mm. actually. Say what you like. A well <laughs> plumber. Potato. Jacket. Jacket. Staple diet of the English. Absolutely. Dustbin. Hoffman. <laughs> I like that. That was very, very funny. You have a taste for fine food, wine and... Absolutely, antiques. I do. Yes, and surprise, And what's your favourite drink? My favourite drink is Bollinger R.D. 1976? Yes. Baby Sham 1976, all I do? <laughs> no, we do, we know, we're on a tight it's a budget. It's come down, really. But we've made a I'll bit give of it a concession. Go. OK, if you hold the glass there for me and I'll open the champagne. The glass is very, uh... oh. oh, I did that once. It was great. There's some plasticine here, mm. which has been under the lights and won't explode, but should be slightly malleable. What would you like me to make? I'd like you to make Ayers Rock. Ayers, just done, darling. There it is. No! <laughs> oh, I suppose you can do better. As you spent, um... A lot of time doing porridge, as it were. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have to eat it. Or can I build something out of it? Exactly. Right? What we'd like you to do is we'd like you to build a map of Australia. Oh, a map of, of Australia! And if you could start now, and then what we'll do is we'll mark you on it at right. the end of the show. So, off you go. The Dallas star, who has been a chiropractor, stock car racer and professional backgammon teacher, is Victoria Principal. You saw me there, now you see me here. That's because I'm very nippy on my feet. I drink Guinness. It's good for you. It's also very handy for cleaning your clothes. I'll see you after the adverts. Oh, God. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I do. I'm going to welcome you to the second half. Oh, you do that. You just do that. I'll bust you. I'll bust you. Don't forget, I got the rank. Mm, what's wrong with him? You know what they say? Dirty pants, clean body. I tell you, he's a genius. Well, I never. The first crossword published in Britain appeared in the Daily Express on the 2nd November, 1924. You crazy? And today we're going to be looking at the subtle, seamless world of wigs. We are, aren't we? Joe, why don't you put a wig on? I am. Oh, no, really? Oh, God, it's such a yes, good one, isn't it? These days, they yeah, make them, don't they? You make can't them well. see the you joy. See nowhere. nowhere. Clever, clever they are. People have been wearing wigs for a very long time, oh. haven't they? And they're very, very expensive things. A handmade wig with each hair individually knotted can cost upwards of £400 and can take between two and six weeks to make, she said informatively and intelligently. The ancient Egyptians used to wear wigs, and in fact, Egyptian kings used to wear false beards as well, which I think is brilliantly funny. But wigs didn't become all that popular in this country until Charles II started going grey, and then he started wearing a wig, so of course everybody else did. 
because that's the way things worked in those days. Of course, these days, nobody wears those silly sort of tight curled grey wigs. Well, not unless they're going about their job of administering the British judicial system, of course, they, absolutely, then they do. Absolutely, absolutely. And barristers quite often get their wigs nicked, that's you right. see, because they're very, very valuable indeed. Blonde hair is the most expensive hair because you can actually sell your hair. So if you're a bit skint, do a quick scalp, take it out the shop. And uh, blonde hair is the most expensive. Nick's hair is the cheapest. Yeah. Okay, just to let you know. Take off that silly hat. It's my hair. Here we have Mendelssohn. <laughs> the Mendelssohn, which makes him look a bit like I don't know what. And then there's Handel. Handel mm -hmm. on this one. And then there's four girls ones called Banana Curly, Banana Kinky, and two other names, Banana Long and Banana Shaggy. Mm. Can you imagine going into a shop and say, I'll have a Shaggy Banana and a Mendelssohn, please? I like all these men's wigs, because yeah. uniformly they're all completely rubbish yes. and completely unconvincing. I mean, quite honestly, <laughs> you'd, you'd rather be bald, wouldn't you, than wear a wig like this? Yeah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Just get away. And people would wear them this obvious. My Uncle Graham, for instance. I hope he doesn't see this show. No, Uncle Graham, it doesn't work, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Pick on me. I mean, I've already had personality hassles from a complete stranger today. And you can get wigs also for your underarms, can't yes, you? Yes, you can. And Which, chest wigs, And indeed. chest wigs, obviously. And, and pubic wigs. Pubic wigs. Mm. And you can have them cut into heart shapes and yes. any shape you and like. And very, very tiny wigs just on the middle of your big yeah. toe. You know the middle of your toe? You just can buy them tiny, in the shop. Just little ones like that. So there you go. Wigs. Fascinating world, hey, Jeff? Mm. Hello again. Which footballer holds the record for scoring most goals for England? Ten people born in the UK who made it big in the USA. Charlie Chaplin, Joan Collins, Stan Laurel, Bob Hope, Elizabeth Taylor, Alfred Hitchcock, Cary Grant, Tracy Ullman, Billy Idol and Raymond Chandler. I think you'll be very serious competition to America. And now something with more hot air in it than Joe Brooks, the hovercraft. A secluded reservoir in Colchester is the scene of top secret tests for a revolutionary new sewage-powered hovercraft. Important civil service observers look on. Meanwhile, back at the Colchester Hovercraft Research Centre, a team of highly skilled boffins is perfecting an exciting new style of whirly-whirly propeller type thing. But here we see Professor Quentin Waddle and his cousin Timmy with their own banana-powered hovercraft about to make its maiden voyage. It can be folded up and stored in the boot of an average-sized family car, which makes it ideal for popping to the local supermarket or picking up the kids from school. Soon, the professor is hoping to circumnavigate the globe in his banana-powered hovercraft. Good luck, Quentin. Britain needs more brave inventors like you. Listen to this. Senator Edward Kennedy was suspended from Harvard University for cheating during his final exams. Too bloody true. Bobby Charlton holds the record for scoring most goals for England and incidentally, did you know that he was also a nephew of the great Jackie Milburn? We just had a letter from one of our viewers. It doesn't actually say anything on it at all. It's just a piece of blue paper folded up into a very small triangle. So I can only presume that what we're being asked to do is talk a little bit more about origami on the show. Nicely done, Nick. You like that? very good. Yeah. Very good indeed. I just don't see why we should have to talk about origami. Yeah, no. I think it's a bit nasty. There's myself. not a lot to say, is there, really? But I do remember getting, you know, a packet of this origami paper way back in the late 60s and 70s and sitting around with the book, which looked something like this. Yeah. Origami for fun. Mm, cracking read. Why else would you do it? Yeah. For Profit? Yeah. Origami for profit? And uh, with my brother and attempting to make one of the simplest things and then getting so bored that that's all we ever did. And then we used the rest of it for cutting out and playing. I mean, what sort of person says to themselves, I'm feeling really bored, I know, uh, I'll go and get some paper and fold it up. Greta Garbo, Joan Crawford, Norma Shearer, Marion Davies, Janet Gaynor, Ruth Chatterton, all of those young women. The British Origami Society was founded in 1967, right? Which was how many years ago? Eleven. <laughs> Don't do some. 23 years ago, and now they've got over 700 members. Well wow. done. Very oh, popular. Oh. This must be nearly as popular as the Train Spotting mm. Society. Uh, yes, that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. They're doing so well. And IBM in 1971 invented computer origami, which was a complete failure. Of course it was. You can't fold computers. They've got bits in. <laughs> <laughs> That was, of course, purely experimental. And, and of course, origami started in Japan, we should say that. Oh, sorry, yes. Started in Japan because, of course, in Japan they like paper. They have paper houses there. 
When they want to move house, just fold it all up, put it in a little book, yeah. off they go. Yeah, down the street. Pickfords would be out of business, I think. They would, wouldn't they? They certainly would. And I, actually, it was developed as a, as a sort of a ladylike occupation, a bit like the other Japanese thing. What's it called with the flowers? Sumo wrestling. Boy, I don't know how you survived in this world up to now. And finally, just a little bit of advice. If you actually have this origami book, something very